Day number uh, 32, 33, quarantine. Whew. Anyways, let's make some steps up. some fun dancing. I don't know about you, but uh, my shins are a little bit on fire at the moment. I have noticed with this quarantine time that I've been dancing a little bit more than usual. And so, you know, you always kind of have to be monitoring the amount of dancing you do. You don't, you don't, you don't want to get any overuse injuries, especially as you get older. I was like, sorry, I was processing like the box and the McDonald's cup. Did you see me like processing that? But with that, one of the things that's like the first sign for me that I've been dancing a lot is shin splints. I've had that my entire dance career. Um, while I've been playing soccer, while I've been dancing, throughout, throughout my years, shin splints has always plagued my career and my development at getting better. And boy, boy does it hurt. Um, and it, yeah, it, it's just, it's never fun. And I've been lucky to have this studio to do most of my dancing. I'm sure with this quarantine that we are all dancing in probably less than ideal locations, be it a kitchen floor or basement floor or even a concrete garage or two. And those types of surfaces aren't too friendly to the, uh, the, the shin area. <laughs> less than ideal uh, pounding happening for, uh, what is it? What's it called? Wait, not weight distribution. Um, shock absorbing, yeah. Floors that don't have great shock absorbing uh, qualities. So we're all dancing wherever we can, wherever's safest, and that's great. But there may be some drawbacks, such as shin, shin splints. So I wanted to share with you three things that I've been doing during this quarantine time to combat shin splints. And while I'm not a doctor, I'm not, you know, I don't have the qualifications to really like back up these things with science. The things that I've done over the years that really helped keep them at bay and, you know, wanted to pass on that to you. I feel like it could be very useful right now. So, something you could do before you actually start dancing is ankle rotations. One leg over the other and just rotating that ankle area, flexing and pointing. It just, for whatever reason, helps kind of wake up and warm up those tendons there that, that can give you some problems in the shin area. Um, I'm not sure if we learned this in school anymore, but cursive. So try to, <laughs> if you know cursive, try to write your name in cursive using your big toe. And <laughs> some people have longer names, some people have shorter names. Um, my last name, Schwartz, is kind of a crazy one to do in cursive. And if you don't know, Cursive, just try to write it, you know, <laughs> write it without cursive. I don't think they teach cursive in, in school anymore. That's a completely different topic, but try to do that on, on both feet. And it kind of just warms up that area, you know, kind of gets, gets that whole place prepped up before you start dancing in a nice gentle way, you know, we're not like attacking our, our feet. It's just a nice little like wake up, wake up like. But then after you're done dancing, um, you're gonna wanna stretch, no matter what. You wanna get some, some, some good stretches and show your legs some love. Always, always cool down and cool down with some stretching after you're dancing. It's just, it's just the safe approach to go, you know? Um, and I know two great stretches for shin splints directly. Um, now also know that my flexibility, or you know, regular flexibility, is terrible. It's been it's something that I've always had to work at. Um, I had the worst flexibility when I first started dancing. Halfway through, I figured out, oh, if I stretch every morning, every night, you know, and make that a part of my daily routine, um, I can kick higher. Wow, it's so great. Um, it's something I've always had to work at, and so these stretches I threw in as well. I'm sure I get a lot of shin splints because of my natural unflexibility. Um, but these are great stretches. And speaking as somebody who's not that flexible. They're a little friendly for, for, for those types of people too, so they're, they're nice for that reason. So nothing too crazy. We're not, we're not like bringing our leg up behind our head or anything crazy. So when we normally stretch our hamstrings straight down, I feel like our chances we tend, we naturally tend to bring those toes out, turn out our feet whenever possible. 
And one, one stretch that, that's helped me out a whole lot is actually turning those feet inward and doing the same type of hamstring stretch and even isolating one, one side to the other and stretching for about, you know, 10 to 15 seconds, depending on how you're feeling it, you know. You gotta feel, feel out those muscles. But stretching this way, I feel it all over on the outside of my legs. And it <laughs> it's a bit of a startler, but it, but, but it feels great, you know, especially after dancing a whole lot. So give that a shot. My third way is another stretch, and it's just as simple. It's another hamstring stretch because we want to stretch out all this stuff. And we're just taking our right leg and putting it over our left. This front leg is bent and it's supporting this back leg that is fully locked. And we're just stretching straight down. Same thing, 10, 15 seconds, feel it out for yourself. I feel like stretching is a very personal time with you and your legs. So feel it out, listen to them. You know, your legs always communicate with you, sometimes more than you would like. <laughs> I'm looking at you, shin splints. And uh, yeah. You can even separate this by focusing for you know 10 seconds on trying to bring your chest to your knee and then focus another 10 seconds on trying to reach all the way down to the floor with your hands. And once you do that, try it on the other leg. Same thing, chest to your knee for 10 seconds and then roll down and try to reach as far as you can down. And you should feel it all over that, again, outside part of your leg. Whereas the first stretch, uh, in, turned in feet, kind of focus on the outside of your like lower part of your leg. This is, I feel way more in the upper part. So it kind of uh, stretches out and shows some love to the, the parts of our legs that we don't use as much when we're Irish dancing. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, they're just three quick little ways to uh, help out any of you with, uh, with shin splints. They've helped me so much. They've helped me out so much over the years. I still continue to do those um, and they help, you know. Nothing helps shin splints more than actually giving them rest and putting your legs up. But this is just another way to show some love to those greatly needed areas of your legs. Because we want to dance. We want to continue dancing and uh, continue creating and having fun. If you like this type of content and would like to see more of it in the future, please consider subscribing and liking this video for more of it to come. Uh, I'm enjoying making these videos and uh, I'm enjoying adding more Irish dancing to YouTube because we definitely need more Irish dance videos on YouTube. It's not enough. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for the support and uh, I will see you in the next one.